What is coming to Microsoft Loop? Well, at Microsoft Ignite, there were a number of different announcements. Remember last year, it was all about the sizzle reel and setting the expectation for what is to come. Well, this year, it is about moving from sizzle reel to sizzle reality. And so this video is going to be about the top announcements for Microsoft Loop at Microsoft Ignite. Finally, we see the Loop app. Yes, the Loop app is going to become available. We see in the demos that it was a web page available at loop.microsoft.com. If you go there without being signed in, you'll see a nice little demo, a bit of an immersive experience of what it's like. Uh, but it is going to be also available as a desktop app. So we expect that it will be web powered, uh, uh, much like Teams, and that you will be able to use it in both browser and on the desktop. First of all, let's look at the reality of Loop Pages. Now, Loop Pages are the place where we contain our Loop components, and we see them in action now as we can create them within the Loop app. Uh, you can decorate them, you can give them a header, you can give them a, an emoticon as part of the title, and these are a place where you can set up a canvas for collaboration. Who has the page open? Well, we can see at the top uh, that people are within the page. Uh, so much like when you're within a Office document. And this is a, a bit different because we can see people uh, within Loop components and also potentially within Loop pages. So there's a, a real interesting representation of presence here as we're working within a Loop page. Loop pages are easy to create. There are templates that you can start from that give you different scenarios and suggestions of way to start. You can also start from an existing page or create something of a blank page. We see at one practices to mention your team members at the top of the page, just people that are involved in the authoring of the page, but it's a good way to bring them into that content. To get your loops into the page from other places that you might have created them, copy the links to your loop and pop them on the page. So this is a way to collect all the different places that you've been collaborating with people, bringing it all together so that it is easy to access. And these components can be shared across different applications, of course. So uh, they might start on the loop page or be part of uh, another experience in Outlook or in Teams or Whiteboard. And this is really one thing that differentiates loop from other Canvas apps, the ability to port productivity to different places. And with these pages, we collect them all together in workspaces. Now we get to see those in action. The workspaces are a place to list out all your pages, but it also appears to be a place that you can share links into those workspaces. Take a link from another document, another file, and share that into the Loop workspace, and it's all collected there together. So now we understand a bit more of the, the tree structure down the left-hand side of what is in a workspace. Now Loop is also coming to the mobile. There will be a Loop app. We didn't really see much of it within the demos at Microsoft Ignite, but we do get an indication of how you can interact with it. You'll be getting a notification of someone who might have mentioned you within a Loop, and you can tap that notification and go directly to the Loop application on your mobile. Now what does this mean for Loop within the Microsoft Office app? Is it still going to be supported there? We're not sure, but we can certainly see a richer experience on the Loop Mobile app. You'll be able to collaborate in real time from the Loop Mobile app, and you'll be able to react and do other various things with those components and atomic units of productivity. Now we also get to see Microsoft Loop coming into Word Online or Word on the Web. This is really interesting about bringing productivity and coordination into a, a document. So that the document is not just a place to create the content, but also to coordinate tasks or to share ideas and to make that a portable experience. Uh, so a loop component might be inside of a Word Online experience and typing up that document, but you could also share that with people uh, to compartmentalize the collaboration of that document. Imagine sharing just a paragraph uh, and asking people to contribute to it and having that loop embedded underneath the actual paragraph within the document. Uh, so you don't need to share the whole document with people, but you can compartmentalize that collaboration experience. So there's going to be a lot of different uh, possibilities there with Loop Components in Word Online, and we're interested to see also where else Loop Components will pop up. 
there are some updates to loop components. Now we have seen a couple of these uh, come to reality. Uh, the uh, questions and answers loop component, which was recently released in Outlook. But the interesting one uh, that was released and mentioned at Microsoft Ignite was loop polls. Um, and these polls are actually powered by Microsoft Forms. You'll recognize some of the options that are available there. Uh, these are the first components that are not actually loop, but they are powered by the loop embed uh, or the loop component, bringing in the live experience of holding a poll. This is, as I said, powered by forms. So you'll see things like word cloud where people can add their contrib contributions to the cloud and you can see those appear in real time. And because they're portable, you can take that same component and put it in other places too, like the loop pages that we mentioned, an email, a chat, or even adding it to an experience within a meeting. We now see also another experience of loop components for third party products. SAP have been busy developing the loop components uh, for their product. And this is using adaptive cards as was mentioned at Microsoft Build. Um, so this is a good example of, of showing the data directly from an SAP uh, record or customer record, bringing that into loop and embedding it wherever loop can be used. Now we have seen adaptive cards and third party products being able to bring content into Microsoft Teams and that experience. But the difference is that these are within loop components and the data is editable and live. So it's not just about showing data, but also allowing you to update a customer record or pulling in information and seeing the, the figures or, or the like uh, change. And lastly, for my roundup, we see Loop uh, is going to receive sensitivity labels. Now, this has been interesting and also an important uh, development for organizations that have turned Loop off because of compliance and sensitivity reasons. So now that we have the sensitivity labels, this should make it a bit easier to use and support. Sensitivity labels will be the same as you would see right across your Microsoft environment. So if you're using them with Office documents, they're going to be the same choices. Just think of Loop as another type of document and you'll be able to change that sensitivity label and apply the appropriate security. Potentially uh, leveraging other types of features to clearly call out that this is a sensitive document. So that's my roundup of Microsoft Loop at Microsoft Ignite. I will be going deeper into each of these topics to analyze it and think about the impacts to productivity and collaboration. If you're keen to learn more about Microsoft Loop and uh, follow along, then do uh, subscribe to my channel, um, do give this video a like if you found it useful, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.